So you're looking to make the move to keyboard and mouse. You're done with controller. It's the life of peasants. You need to move on and get better aim. You want your aim to be so good that people are reporting you in lobbies and you're making little kids cry as they think you're cheating that you're landing so many good shots. You just want to go into Call of Duty lobbies, smash them and get back to back wins. And that is awesome. So you've watched my first video, right? If you haven't watched that, definitely do so. Do it now before watching this video so you can have aim just like me on the screen right now. So let's get going, guys. It's time to get your KD up. Time to fry lobbies, get more wins, and have a good time in the process. Guys are gonna like this one. It's gonna be a banger. Let's go. What's going on guys? Welcome to the channel. Thank you so much for being here. Be sure to subscribe and tap the bell if you guys enjoy the videos and the content. And be sure to check out the live streams on Kick, Twitch, TikTok, and right here on YouTube. And be sure to check out the store, Acrylics, the one and only, the Acrylics, one and only .com, right there on the screen. We're gonna jump right into this video in hand, which is playing keyboard and mouse. And the reason why we're doing this is I released a video recently in the last couple of months teaching you how to jump from controller to keyboard and mouse easily and fast. And that video is right there at the top the screen if you guys want to check that out and you haven't done that already this is part one of the advanced training on how to get better on keyboard and mouse let's jump right into it let me show you guys exactly how you can start honing your aim now that you've got the basics down from that previous video which again like i said if you haven't seen it the link is in the information box below and i had it on the screen above me earlier let's dive right in let me show you guys how you can perfect your aim with some advanced training right now let's go let's get right into it, guys on pc if you've got steam already installed you're good to go if not you got to download Steam, set up an account, and download the game from Steel Series called 3D Aim Trainer Pro. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to dive in. Once you log into 3D Aim Trainer Pro, you're going to see this right here. I'm going to show you my achievements. I'm in the top 0.3% in the world on this program. We're going to go ahead and set up. You're going to see my global aim rank. I'm ranked 322 out of 175,000 people that are doing this. I spend a lot of time doing this. It is very difficult, a lot of these things to really hone into. So here we we go first before we start off we got to get the settings correct you got to look at which game you're playing if you're going to be playing apex click on that if you're going to be doing call of duty then you click on call of duty like i did for warzone right now i got the warzone settings 120 is my fov this is my ads multipliers and my sensitivity that i play with in the game you got to set that to the game that you're playing and the settings you play with in the game i highly recommend using my settings or as close as possible you don't want high sensitivity if you are playing games like fortnite or PUBG, you can definitely click those it'll give you a third person perspective instead of first person perspective so we got the settings all set up let's go ahead and go into becoming a pro so part one of this video we're gonna have four different parts we have flicking tracking switching and clicking and i'm gonna explain to you guys what every one of these things are so you guys can understand a little bit better flicking is for sniping it's when you're moving your mouse and you're flicking left and right tracking is where you stay steady on the target to make sure that you are landing all your shots and you're able to track them whether they're moving quickly or slowly it does not matter tracking handles that switching is when you're shooting one target and switch to another then back to another target for example so we're switching really comes in handy is when you want to defeat two different players at the same time there is a way to do this and sometimes smarter is better and that's where switching comes in you guys can see from the video on the screen i attack two players i start shooting one he panics when i break his armor his buddy turns around to start shooting me i already know that the guy that i broke the armor is going to run away and play it up so he's not a threat anymore. I switch over to the other guy. I got the jump on him because I know that I can start shooting him first quicker before he can start shooting me. I break him and down him and then I go back and switch to the other target while he's plating up and finish him. Had I stayed shooting the initial player I was originally shooting, his partner would have killed me. And the reason is because I would have taken an extra second or two to finish him and his partner would have had the time to start shooting me and down me. Since I broke the first guy's armor, he's no longer a threat. He's going to start panicking and run. And when this happens, the player 
player panics, runs, plates up. He's no longer as much of a threat. You switch to the other guy and start tagging him before he can start shooting you. And now you've got them both in a panic. And that's how you win a 1v2. And that is where switching comes into play. Clicking is a little bit different. This is more for like pistols or guns that are semi-automatic or fully manual. It's a very good training session to go through. But in this video, we're going to focus on tracking, which is very important. First video we're doing today, like I said, is on tracking. It's the most important. You got four fundamentals of tracking. Let's go ahead and set up the routines and explain to you guys what they mean. First off, you got precision. What precision basically is, you continually following the target and getting the most accurate tracking possible. Those could be close range circles like you saw there or small ADS switching between ADS and hip firing, which is very critical for war zone. You got your vertical close up and down. Then you have your ball that bounces around a room, but it's steady, constant speeds that move up and down and around. Then you have more of the ball training with ADS switching to hip fire, which is really critical. These are your basic routines. You go into your advanced routines. They're pretty much the same, just harder. Advanced routines are even harder than the intermediate routines, and I haven't even done them, as you guys can see. I highly suggest working on your basic and intermediate for the first few months, and then you can advance on to your advanced precision routine. That is precision. That's just you landing all your shots and tracking. Smoothness is how smooth you're tracking at a consistent speed, meaning the smoothness is not going to test you on erratic movement or sporadic behavior. It's going to be mainly a constant speed that never changes to see how smooth your hand is. Sometimes people are very good at tracking sporadic movement, but they can't maintain the same speed for a long duration of time, which as you guys can see here, it's consistent movement that does not change. And I will show you guys what I'm talking about because I'm going to do some of these tests for you. The next we got speed. It's basically smooth tracking, but back and forth, really fast back and forth patterns. I'm in the top 1.5% here. I haven't done these in quite some time. The very first time you do these tests, you're going to fall behind and you're probably going to be around a thousand points. Do not get discouraged. You guys can see here how critically fast it is, but it's going to teach you speed. And there are other tests here that are going to show you how to move around and track precisely quickly. Basically, speed is almost like precision, but a lot faster, whereas smoothness is completely different. Like I explained, it's the same consistent speed, consistency and smoothness of your tracking. And reactivity is the most difficult yet just as important one. This is very difficult to do. What reactivity is, is left and right and up and down and all kinds of sporadic short close movements. Then the next one you take a test on is going to be close short movements, but you're going to see there's sporadic movement left and right. And then the one after this is going to be up and down all kinds of reactivity, meaning it's testing you how you can react to movements quickly. It's going to test your cognitive function and how accurate you are. So not only how smooth and precise you are and how fast you are, it's going to test you on all three of these things at one time. Let's dive right in and show you guys the different tests so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about. So we're going to go into one of these tests for speed back and forth. And I'm going to show you in the first example how the average person will probably play this the first time. This is overreaction. You don't want to do this. You need to calm it down follow the screen follow the pattern and you see how you've now honed it in don't worry steady your hand and you'll be a little bit jumpy the problem with being overreactive like that is you're too jittery too jumpy you can see without even firing if you're too jittery and you're panicking it's not going to work just follow the screen just follow the screen see how i'm doing this with the screen And then you just adjust your cursor with the mouse. See, you're, you're gonna overreact just like this. Hone it in. See how I'm like getting better? I'm showing you guys how to do this. And if you get out of whack, it'll look like this. You'll go the opposite of where it's going. So follow the screen, calm it down, get the pacing right. See, I'm correcting it. I'm not going all in right now. I'm just trying to show you how to do it. See, with, with the screen. That's, that's what it's going to look like for you. I'm showing you what it would look like for a new player. You're going to want to just get used to going with the movements. It's a very uh, difficult thing to do. Reactivity is also very difficult. You got to anticipate where everything's going to go. So you're going to be jumping all over the place like this. Don't do that. Just follow it around. I'm playing like a new player would play right now, just kind of missing everything like this. But as you 
get the patterns up and you start to hone in like I did in the other one. See how you can just start to track it? That's how you start adapting to it. Until you get to a point where you can just, you know, track every single movement. So what you're going to do to get your aiming better is you're going to start off with precision, do the basic routines. And after you've mastered all the basic routines, you're going to take your test on the horizontal assessment. Then you're going to do the smoothness, all basic smoothness routines. Then you're going to take the smoothness test. Then you're going to go to the speed, do all the speed tests. And then you're going to do the XY tracking. Then you're going to do reactivity. You don't have to do all the reactivities because this is very difficult, but I recommend you do. Even though I didn't, I recommend you do. And once you do that, you can take the low ground. Once you do those, you should notice a big improvement yet again. Once you're done with all those, go to the intermediate. Do the precision intermediate, then go to the smoothness intermediate. Once you do both of those on intermediate, do all the tests again. And then take the speed and reactivity test on advanced and go ahead and take the tests again. Once you've mastered all of the tracking, then you can move on to flicking, clicking, switching. I'm going to do my next video on switching. It's very important. If you're not sniping, clicking and flicking is very good, but tracking and switching are critical fundamentals of Call of Duty, PUBG, Apex Legends, Fortnite, and all of those games. Very critical. So I want you guys to practice very hard, like I just said. I'm going to be checking comments daily and responding to you guys to make sure you're doing okay in the tracking tests. And I want you guys to stay on this tracking for the next two to three weeks. And at that time, I will come out with a switching video teaching you guys how to do more switching and how to get better at that. But I want to give you guys a three-week head start on this at least, maybe even a month, and I'll be here to help you. Do not jump into switching at this time. It's going to take you guys at least a month of solid dedication on tracking to get good. Do not rush into it. Trust me on this one. Don't do that. We're going to look at the basic test, which is the final test. I'll play each of the final tests to show you guys how this works. Um, it gets a little bit more difficult. You go along to the low ground. When you really stay at it, you'll get better. And I've been slacking the last month. I'm going to put some more time into it myself. But you guys can see, you know, my first game on in the day, I'm still in the top 600, my first game on. You don't lose this ability. When I very first did low ground, I was probably sitting somewhere around 3,000 or 2,500. And after taking a month or two off from training, I'm still pretty much right where my record was. That shows you, you don't lose this once you get it. Let's go ahead and look at the XY tracking to show you what that looks like it's the final test I'll show you guys some other tests that you guys can be working on to improve your aim and this is actually one of my favorite tests as it really helps This is really going to give you guys much better aim training than you would just playing Call of Duty. Of course, there's movement, sliding, awareness, IQ of the map, where the enemy is going to be, circle, end game, stuff like that. This is going to teach you how to aim and shoot. All right, guys, this is the last one. Smoothness. This one's really fun. I tell you what, it's a lot harder than it looks. When I first started doing this, I was all over the place. This is a very difficult test at first. Don't be discouraged. Some of the training routines are pretty easy. They're just basic. They're nowhere near as hard as the final test that I just did. This would just give you a little idea of what we're talking about here for tracking. Fifty-four hundred is a little bit less than my last score, but you guys can see even after two months of not training, I'm still in the top 0.1%. This one is the ADS one. It shows you how to go to ADS and then leave ADS. Appreciate you guys being here. Be sure to subscribe, tap the bell, and check out the live streams and my other videos. We'll catch you guys in the next upload or live stream. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Good luck to you. Peace out, and I'll see you on the next one.
Let's go. Fun fact, the slinky was invented by accident. The scientist who invented the slinky actually knocked a metal coil off a shelf by accident. When he saw it bouncing from surface to surface instead of falling to the floor, he realized he had a potentially great toy idea on his hands, and the slinky was born. Goodbye. You guys are still here? I know you enjoy the video. It's great, of course. But this one's over. It's over, my dudes. I'll tell you what, though. I picked this one just for you. And I think you're gonna like it. Go ahead, click it. Trust me, you're gonna like it. Come on, my dudes, right there. Got it.